I'm Anna Olson here on A1R Radio with my segment today every Tuesday at 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. My show is called Insights into Consciousness, and today I'm just going to do all readings. So for the entire segment, we get to do some readings, and um, I'm just going to take some callers. First off, I just want to um, reiterate that I am a reader. I do private readings. I do medium readings. I do life path readings. I do just about any type of reading you can imagine. You can contact me as always. It's on the bottom of the screen at Anna AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. And you can reach me there. You can also look for me on Facebook at Anna Olson Intuitive and on Instagram at Tiny Queendom Medium. Um, actually, it's Tiny Medium Queendom. I always get those mixed up. So, yeah, you can always reach me there and contact me directly for a reading. But today I would like to um, take some callers on the air and just start reading people. I want to just kind of offer my services out to people today and just see how that goes. So um, we can um, just do all readings today. So uh, the first thing that I want to kind of go over too is um, I've had actually people um, contacting me and telling me that they have had a really hard week this last week. And um, I've had a great week. I, for me, things have been great, um, but I keep hearing this, and what I'm gathering is that there is huge transitions going on for this last week. I think a lot of it is that we have the vaccine with the COVID, and that a lot of people are noticing a shift. There's a shift with a lot of people. There's a way that people are thinking a little differently. There's a way that people are kind of moving more into a way of uh, thinking about the future, the way that it was and continuing on where they left off before COVID. And this makes for lots of transition because our higher consciousness was automatically elevated and changed into our higher self and into a different place with COVID. There was the pandemic, sometimes loss of money, etc. So what that does is that brings people into a place of an interesting um, balance of wanting to pay attention to their spirituality and really question what they're doing with their lives. And then in addition, kind of getting in touch with that higher self. And now that we're kind of going back into where we were before, we're trying to figure out how to initiate all these things that we gained with our higher consciousness and maybe, you know, just trying to figure out what's really important in life and, and now initiating that into the real world. So it's, it's basically just, trying to find out how to use this new skill set that we have. And it's more of an energetic, spiritual, um, mental, emotional, all-encompassing, holistic way of being. So um, this is this is what we're now initiating into the real world. And that can take a lot of transition for people. It takes transition. It takes um tenacity it's like learning a new job or a skill set and then going in to practice that so just remember be patient with yourself you know and be patient with others we're all getting the hang of this this is really a lot about transitioning and lots of people feeling a lot of change and not just change but it just using those new spiritual skills and uh, emotional skills that we've gained into this going back into the real world. And we're just at the baby, st- baby stages of that. So I'd like to take a caller now on the air live. Her name is Amy Jo. Hi, Amy Jo. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, what would you like to focus on today? your reading oh i'd like to see if i can um get a message from my fiance okay how long has it been since your fiance has passed three months three months well this is pretty new still well thanks for calling in and i appreciate you trusting me with this information um so first of all um, it's really interesting because I just I just had something happen with my computer when I started to tap into your fiance. So there's an electronic thing that just happened um, right at that opportune time, I guess you could say. So the first thing that I, I would like to draw to your attention is that usually that means that we're getting some kind of contact because usually spirit will yeah communicate with us electronically, phone, computer, this and that. So um, 
I'm going to focus in and see if there are any messages that I'm getting so far. Do you, do you have any questions before I start, or do you have any questions for him specifically? Not that I can think of, no. Okay. So I'm focusing in, and um, it's, it's interesting because I am getting that that your fiance had, um, now usually when spirit shows me that somebody is, um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's basically like maybe um, some trauma in childhood. Now, do you know if your fiance, did he ever share with you some trauma in childhood? Yes. Yeah, um, he's showing me that. He's showing me a story and it's dealing with his, his trauma in his childhood. Um, now, was it like a, a, it's almost like he either needed to be in foster care or he was in foster care? He was raised by his grandparents. Okay, that's kind of how it felt though. Okay, so he's raised by his grandparents. So he was, um, it's interesting that foster came, care came up that he was raised by his grandparents because I feel like he's telling me um, that he had this long story. He's showing me and he's telling me his story. He's letting me know all these things he went through and how he tried to deal with it. And that it's, it's very interesting because I, um, I was just thinking this morning about how I wanted to volunteer my own time into helping children who have been in the system, the foster care system, adopted children. I have a close friend. She just shared a bunch of stuff with me from her childhood and it, made me really want to do something for these kids who seem to go unheard. And it's interesting because today you are calling in and now I'm feeling like your fiance is showing me this with his childhood. And I feel like he, what he's showing me is that he is, he has great potential still. So he wants me to show you that now. Um, he was pretty young. I'm sure when he passed, cause you sound young, but I'm getting yeah, that. He was younger than I am. Okay, how old was he when he passed? 35. Yeah, that's really young. Because I'm showing, he's showing me that there is, um, there is a great potential, especially of income for him, that he could have gone really far with a business or a, um, a way of making an income and really having his own skill set. Um, now, what he's saying, though, is that in the next life, he has a lot of that same potential. And he wants you to know that just because people pass on, that they don't stop working and they don't stop um, producing, meaning they produce something. And he's working hard, but he wants to go back to, um, he's kind of shifting my attention back pretty strongly to you and your energy because he's showing me your grief and he's showing me actually how strong you are. And he knows that you can get through this. He's saying that you're equally as strong as he is. He gained a lot of strength throughout his childhood. I feel like he really had to make do with a lot less than others at times, not all the time, but just cer certain times he really had to come through and be very resourceful to survive in certain situations. And He's showing there's just this amount of uh, an amazing amount of tenacity, and he's showing me that you're the same way that you have so much strength. Um, now, is there somebody in the mix? Maybe it was his birth mother, or maybe there's somebody in the mix that had an issue with um, substance abuse. Um, um, does that ring a bell? Um, he had the substance abuse issue. Yeah. Yeah, because um, it's interesting. It's like he's saying it came through the genetic line. Now, he didn't have enough yeah, tools to fight it. it. His what? He started doing them with his mom. His mom doesn't do them anymore, but his brothers do still. Uh huh. Right. So he's saying he's acknowledging that and he's showing me how so many. Um, people from troubled childhoods end up dealing with addiction, not just alcoholism over the long term, but with drug addiction, drug abuse, 
And he's saying his cup was empty. Like he wished that he could have a lot more to have worked with. It, it just seems like all of his resources were so scarce. Yeah. And what he's showing me now is that what he would really like to happen as a result is that more people do more for um, children. Um, and I think he's aiming this at you too. He's kind of saying, look, I think the only way that we can make light of his passing and to really make something so painful, something good or something that's um, going to make a big difference in the world in a positive way would be that somebody, everybody kind of get together and figure out how to help these kids at risk. Because he's pointing to childhood, he's pointing to the children, he's pointing to these kids that really have no one. They don't have good guidance. They don't have anywhere to go after school or they don't have um, resources of knowledge to know this is who you, you know, this is who you should be around if you want to do this in your life, you know. Um, get rid of these friends if you want to go here, you know, in your life. And that's what he's showing me. Um, he's showing me that through divine guidance that others can really make a plight in helping children and young, I guess it'd be like teens, you know, young adults and really guiding them into college, guiding them into making their own business and things like that. Cause he's saying most of these kids are business owners. And that's really what he wished that he could have done and should have done. Um, I know I'm kind of giving you a lot of information all at once. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Um, he's showing me that amount of pain that you have, and he's saying that the best way to get through your grief is to be proactive in helping other people in his same situation or in your same situation. That You know, how many people can you help through your work here um, by finding those women who've been in the same situation you've been in? What What is the psychology behind women who... Um, are having to deal with so much of this stuff that you've had to deal with, with him, with addiction, with drug use, substance abuse. Um, how can you make a difference and being proactive and helping others and using yourself for, you know, and your experience for just making a difference with others is going to make the most difference with you is what I'm getting. I've been trying to help people get clean because I felt I couldn't help him get clean. Mm -hmm. And, and he's also saying this was his journey and there was only, you were, you were as much help as you could be, you know, this was for, this is for the addict to really work through on their own. You can support them. And he said, part of it is setting the boundaries and he's really pointing to setting the boundaries and helping other people in your situation, setting those boundaries and walking away when you know that he's not doing the right thing, you know, he's talking about codependency and he's talking about how that's an angle too. And he said that you had your own pain when you were young and that this is also a result of having the, those difficulties that you grew up with, that sometimes that puts you in this situation or this position to do this dance with the addict. So he's just saying that it goes, it's both sides. There's pain and suffering in both positions in these relationships. It can be, you know, a romantic partner. It can be mother and child. It can be siblings. There's no limit to what, who, you know, this can affect. So he's really just pointing to the fact that he's, he's asking you to really help others in the same situation with your vast and amazing amounts of experience in the, in the topic. And that that's going to be the absolute most healing for you and to others. Yeah. So, um, good luck to you. I know, um, it must be so hard having lost a fiance and especially in the way that, you know, you were, you were trying to support him and I'm sure that you've made a lot of progress and I'm sure there was like back and forth, you know, two steps forward and how many steps back, right? Yeah. 
and then it comes to an end when he's he's only 35 and so these things are tragic and these things are painful and he's he in spirit they're saying you know this is what you do with this you you have to help other people in the same situation to heal the most and to heal others the most so Um, I, I hope that it's been helpful and, um, you know, you can always continue reading with me too. You can contact me at Anna Olson intuitive.com and we can go into it further, but I thank you for calling in. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Okay. So I have a, another caller and I believe they're from Ireland. Um, I forgot the name, um, but um, next Maureen. caller, can I have your name, please? Uh, my name's Moet. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? Pretty good. I've been, um, I was looking at the spelling of your name, and it's a little different than how we'd spell it here, but could you say it again, please? Moet. It's Irish oh. from August. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks for calling in. What would you like to focus on today for your reading? I'd like to know if you can uh, see me having another uh, baby. My daughter is uh, pregnant now. She's doing uh, about four and a half weeks. Okay. So um, it was a little hard hearing you, but you said you wanted to know if you if you're going to have another baby? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, um, it's interesting because spirit. What's that? Oh, anything you can uh, tell me it is. Of course. Yeah. The first thing I'm seeing is to prepare and spirit is saying that there's something for you to prepare for. I feel like it could be financial, maybe it's physical. So I'm I'm actually seeing more of a physical preparation where um, it, it's something along the lines of um, hormones. Have you had issues with getting pregnant or have you tried to do IVF or something? No, I never had any issues. I haven't been a uh... Trying. Okay. I never had any issues. I've uh, two kids and I had okay, a miscarriage before. Okay. Maybe it's more about um, preparing yourself physically to take on the responsibilities, is kind of what it feels like. Because, you know, it's, it, we all know how tiring it is to have babies. You have children already. So I think it's pointing more, I think spirit is pointing more towards. Being prepared in a way where you physically, um, you know, you you're caught up on sleep, you are um, able to, you know, feel better because it's interesting because spirit is telling me that um, there there may be a couple things in your relationship too that you can still kind of work on and that um, could be that your partner is is a little bit worried about money. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so. Um, I, I do feel like you could absolutely have another baby that it would be great that there it that that's your choice that you do have a spirit that would like to come through and to be part of your family that if you wanted to make that choice and do that and take on that responsibility that you absolutely could and I'm seeing that it would be a boy spirit yeah my daughter's to uh, boy now in four weeks okay yeah, and I, I feel like you could have this um, other baby, and it would be a year and a half. That would be that would be a really good time for you to really be ready and start trying, because I, I do. Spirit's telling me what I see is that it would be good for you to make sure that your money situation is all in the clear for your partner, and then of course, um, you know, really take care of yourself because I do feel like um, one other baby right now would just be. You know how they are. They're just so much responsibility, but spirit yeah. is just pointing to the fact that it is your choice. What, you know, there's no obligation that you have. 
Um, there is a little boy that would like to come through and be part of your family. However, if this is a responsibility for you that you really don't feel quite ready for, that's okay. Um, I do I feel that if you decide, yeah, I do feel like if, if you do not have the baby, you may kind of miss the, you know, miss like, I don't know, just having a baby and, and kind of feel bad that you missed that opportunity or that you decided against it later, but it would be okay. You know, you would be all right with it, but you would have a little bit of a grief period because I do feel like you're asking because you really do want another baby deep down. Yeah, I do. And, um, you know, there would be, yeah, there would be, there would be some grief there. You know, there would be a grieving period if you decide not to. But just know this little boy who wants to come through, he is very active. He's going to be a, a wonderful spirit. He's going to be very sweet. However, he's going to be active. He will take a lot of attention and time and energy. And, and you know children do anyway. But he's really yeah. going to be demanding. And it's just something for you to know. Um, but absolutely, you could. Um, but I do feel like you have it in your heart to have another baby. And I, I feel like you're just going to go ahead and take the leap and do it. That's what I'm feeling at this point. I would tell you. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Do you think you're, you're going to go ahead? I think with my family around. What's that? My mom or my dad or um, your mom or your dad? So yeah. they passed? No, no, they're not passed. Okay. Um, you're just asking if they'll be around for the the baby or? Yeah, like my dad's uh, eighty one. Mhm. Mm I do feel that if you decide to have this baby, that um. Your dad will be around until until the little boy is in about the third grade. What is that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he would get to know him. Okay. He'd be able to see him. Yeah. My, would, my, uh, would my daughter be all right? Uh, and she's having all day. She's doing so Um. Let me look at that. You know, um, I do feel like she she's going to have a, a rough labor. I mean, it would be good that she has a lot of support. Um, she will be fine. Um, and I do feel like she's going to have some difficulties with... Um, I think it would be really good to look out for postpartum depression and to really make sure that she has a really good support network after having this baby. I do see some signs here that she's going to need a lot of support from the father. Is the father still around? Yeah, but he's, uh, he's a bit like he's a bit difficult. Like he's not, they're not, they're still together, but he's like getting into trouble and that. Right. That's that's bringing her a lot of stress for this pregnancy. And yeah. she's going she's going to need a lot of support from the family. Yeah, she not she will she definitely has that work for all very close. And... Oh good. That's good. Cause I, I feel like she's she's gonna have a hard time with this one. Um she'll be all right, you know. I think she'll need a lot of time yeah. for herself to regroup and to recover. Um, it may be that, does she have a scheduled C-section? Is she, um, do you know if they're going to have a C-section done to deliver the baby? Okay, I guess she got disconnected. Darn, if you're still listening, um, I, I just want you to know that I do see that there's probably going to be a C-section. So there will be a lot of time that she's going to need to recover. Um, and that's going to be part of her difficult time after having this baby. It'll be like a postpartum thing. She can definitely explore things like natural alternatives to um, 
help with that postpartum other than drugs. But of course, there are antidepressants and things that they sometimes give women for this. But I do feel like she has to really weigh that out with um, if she's going to um, nurse the baby because the, some of these drugs do go into the breast milk. So it's really important that um, she weigh that very carefully and that she get a lot of support. It sounds like she has a great family network though. So um, this was really fun today. Um, I wish that I could, I could understand the Irish accent a little better. I think I need to take a trip to Ireland to get used to it. But um, yeah, we got to talk to somebody today in Ireland and um, the U.S. I got to touch base with somebody who's passed and give his fiance some information about helping others and how the best way to deal with grief in some cases, most cases, is to help other people in the same situation and gain support that way. Connect with like-minded people. Um, yeah, sometimes these spirits, they just want to come on through and be born to your family. It's really fun to work with this kind of a thing. I love babies and figuring out who's going to be part of whose family. It's a lot of fun, but I do need to go, unfortunately. I wish I could stay on for another hour, but I just love you guys so much. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Tuesday at 1.30 Pacific Standard Time here on A1R. I'm Anna Olson, AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com on A1R. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.